Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and this is a reply message to uh, BioNear23 who was talking about the uh, high purity germanium detectors. I wanted to um, show you the sodium iodide detector on the other side of the court and kind of give you an idea. Sodium iodide detectors of course are not as good as high purity germanium detectors when it comes to their ability to actually resolve the uh, uh, gamma peaks. But then again they also cost at least 10 times less money and you don't need liquid nitrogen which of course has already been brought up a couple of times. This is uh, my uh, uh, this is my uh, multi-channel spectrum analyzer and this is the unit right here which takes all of the data from my, my sodium iodide detector and makes something meaningful out of it. As you can see here the activity light shows that it's currently receiving data from a sample but it's not currently acquiring data. I've paused it for the moment and of course has uh, voltage meters on everything like this. The back of the unit is actually, um, actually rather complicated. It has lots and lots of switches and devices and equipment on it. Lots and lots of ports. I could connect all sorts of interesting things to it, but I don't. Anyhow, <clears throat> this is the actual detector itself. The detector is fed by cables in here. Let's see, and as you can see, power goes in and then data comes out. This is a jacket of lead. It's actually quite thick. The detector itself is not very thick at all. This is the detector. Let me put this camera down and pull the detector down for you to see. Here's the detector. It's not very big. It's only a 38 millimeter detector anyway. Not very big at all. But that fits down in here. The detector itself is in the very, very end. The majority of that metal there is the photomultiplier tube which takes the signals from the crystal and converts them into meaningful pulses of electricity. Let me cut the uh, Geiger counter off. It's making a lot of noise. I have a Geiger counter out, of course, because I'm dealing with a radioactive material. Normally I have lead around the entire outside of this. These blocks of lead are themselves 38.1 millimeters in, in width. These blocks of lead are coated with a polyurethane spray. That's why I can hold them safely without worrying too much. Although I do have rubber gloves if I need them for any particular reason. All right, let me move the lead out of the way and show you what's inside. I have the lead on little blocks of wood. And if I've tested everything from the lead to the wood to make absolutely sure that it doesn't have any um, uh, contamination that, that would cause me problems, let's cut the Geiger counter back on. This is my current sample, Europium-152. If you put the counter over it, it's actually quite radioactive to give you an idea. And such will, as such, we'll put a uh, protective lead shield over top of it while I'm talking so that I'm not just exposing myself needlessly for no particular reason. This is the inside of the detector. And inside of the detector, we have a donut of lead over the top of the actual crystal itself. And this donut's about an inch thick. If you pull these out, this is a thick piece of aluminum. It's just aluminum. And there's a thin piece of aluminum, another piece. And the detector's up inside of there. See, the detector is actually right inside of there. And this little guy is actually able to resolve better than most detectors of its type. Let's put the sample back in and let me show you the kind of resolution this one's able to give, to give you. Alrighty, let's pull the um, lead off. Put the sample back in. And now we'll move the lead blocks back into position. Push them up against. This is what one does when they can't afford a full lead castle. Lead castles are very, very expensive because of shipping. All the lead blocks, each one of the blocks isn't very expensive, but you can spend hundreds of dollars and probably hundreds of euros if you're in Europe on just shipping costs. And a lot of us don't want to do that. So if you go to eBay, you can buy these guys for about a dollar a piece. Spray, spray them with polyurethane spray and they work great. I have a couple extras to lay around on top to make sure everything is nice and blocked off. The downside, of course, to having the lead is you pick up a lot of x-rays around the outside from um, interactions with whatever source you have inside of there. Now, it's important when working with a sodium iodide like this, especially since I'm not going to have the expensive software that the high-purity uh, germanium detector is going to have for identifying isotopes, to have all of your little charts up here that show all of the uh, various decay chains, and uh, uh, then you can reference them, as well as things like your current calibration. Currently my calibration is set at 650 volts, uh, a coarse gain of 4, and a fine gain of 1.15.
and of course all the other information that you might need to work with. By the way, there's nothing in these. They're completely empty. All right, now let me show you the kinds of things I'm able to get on the screen. All right, folks, here we are. And I've been recording. I, I stopped recording of this sample when I opened the chamber so I wouldn't contaminate it, but then I started recording again. In my software here, you can see that I've been running for 50,786 seconds, which is a pretty good amount of time. I'll be running for a total of 24 hours. And this is Europium-152. But let's confirm that that's actually true. As you can see, this one particular peak right here has had uh, 5.7, nearly 5.8 million counts in that period of time. So it's actually quite a lot. We're in what's called a linear view, which means that this is exactly proportionate to this. And that means the rest of these lines basically flatline. If you were to change the scalar on the side here, you would notice these actually do have actual peaks in them. Let's switch to a logarithmic view, which allows us to see all of the peaks. Here they are, way up at the top, because this has been running for quite some time. <clears throat> Let's turn on our isotope matcher and see what we have. As you can see, we think we have Europium-152. Of course, that's probably because I purchased Europium-152. And sure enough, we do. You can see right here all the lines match up quite nicely. This is similar to what you saw in the Europium, not the Europium, the uh, Hyper-T Germanium uh, sensor, except the software that it uses is significantly better than this. For example, this software does not actually detect the isotope. I have to do that myself but I can uh, set this thing up to help me with identification. As you can see, it's pretty close to dead on all the way across, and there's a lot more uh, fields and, or not fields, there's a lot more energy uh, peaks in European 152 that are not represented here. And that's all right, though. Okay. Now let's stop for a minute. Let's, um, let's get rid of our isotope matching for just a second. Here, here we go. And let's grab an integral, an ROI if you like. Here's one for this guy right here. And let's see what we get. We've had a total of gross counts for, wow, 40 million, 640,000. And you notice that my full width half, half uh, value is 15.323 so I'm actually doing much better than the norm and that's because of how high of a peak I've gotten right here if these guys continue to rise they would probably come up with a similar number eventually too but when I grab a integral here you notice that my uh, uh, full width half maximum is 34.72 again much better than 50 percent but that's because I have a good piece of equipment it depends on your sodium iodide detector. You can actually buy better ones than what I have, and you'll get an even better resolution than I have. But it's important to uh, realize that you get in, you get out of it what you put into it. Alrighty. So that's a sodium iodide detector. They're actually quite impressive. You can't see what's happening right now because it's happening too fast. Let's clear this. Turn it back on the counts, and let's zoom this so these numbers down here are lower and lower and lower and lower and we're going to look down at the very base of the channels and you can see the data is actually moving in here pretty quickly depending on where you are look there's the little scrolling cursor going up the screen <laughs> and if we stop this and take an integral and start it again we'll see that the counts are going in like crazy look at those numbers go wow but that's to be expected with a powerful source like this. As you can see here, we have a few other interesting things, a source here and a source here. On a high purity germanium detector, I could resolve each one of these individually. On the sodium iodide, I can't. They come in as almost like one peak. The reality is they are two peaks, but I can't resolve them on this. Even though I have a really good setup, I cannot resolve two peaks that close. It's just too close. Here's another example. This is actually two peaks. I'll show you. See? The lines for both peaks right here. There's a line there and a line there. And um, if I didn't have this ROI on here, you actually would see it. There it is. The, the peaks, as you can see, it's funny, it shows green. Ah, stop choosing green. Here, let's do that and then choose another color. There we go. 
As you can see, there's actually two peaks right here, but I can't resolve them. They're too close. And because of various things like energy um, and uh, um, efficiency and other things like that, these are not coming in as well. I can resolve them better over here in this end than I can over here in this end, and even worse over in this end. Now I can set this uh, uh, calibration up to, to get a much wider area, but I'm not going to do that right now. Anyhow, so um, thanks to BioNerd again for um, giving me a, spectro uh, a spectrograph of the uh, thorium sand and showing the two comparisons with one another. I'd love to try sand like that on a unit like mine, which can actually have at least a somewhat of a chance of, um, of, a, of a, a pulling apart some of those more, more squeezed together lines. And I'd love even more to use a Hyperity Germanium uh, uh, setup, but of course I can't buy one of those. I would have had to have chosen to buy one of those instead of my car. And if I had chosen to buy one of those instead of my car, I could have had one, but I think, um, I think my wife would have killed me. So anyhow, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and bye-bye. Uh,